Welcome to Apple Insider, everyone. It is Andrew here. Linksys has debuted a newer version of their popular Velop routers, this time making it more affordable for more people. There are now two sets of Velop routers on the market, the newer dual-band AC3900 for homes up to 4,500 square feet and internet plans up to 100 Mbps, and then there's the older model, which is the more powerful model, which is for much larger homes and internet speeds up to around 300 Mbps. Not only can you buy them in three packs, but you can buy them in two packs as well as solo. That gives you lots of options for your home, whether you have multiple stories or really long, if you only need one, two, three, and that dual or tri-band routing. Now we've already done a review on the original Velop, so we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison between the two and test out the newer models and see how they perform by themselves. So again, they are for smaller homes, up to about 4,500 square feet if you use all three nodes. And internet speeds are a little bit lower and it's dual band instead of tri-band. You can see kind of a good comparison right on the side of the box, which highlights the fact that internet speeds differ about 100 to 300, dual band versus tri-band, and the number of homes or rooms and the size of each home. Of course, the only other minor difference is the lack of cable management, and we'll show you that it's really not too much of a big deal. Inside of the box, you're gonna find the same thing that you find with the larger Velop system. Three separate nodes, which are literally identical, so it does not matter which is which, a quick start guide, a actual ethernet cable. So there is one included, which is to connect your primary node to your modem. And then of course, three separate power cables. The power cables are not anything fancy. They're not micro USB. They're just some standard barrel connector power cables. So they aren't too bad to replace if you ever needed to, but they're not as easy as like a micro USB or USB-C that we see with something like the Eero routers. Jumping into the hardware, you notice it looks pretty similar to Apple's airport routers that have now been discontinued, just maybe a little bit boxier and shorter. Around back, there are two Ethernet ports, one for maybe connecting to your actual modem and the other for plugging in additional devices or an Ethernet switch. And then, of course, you have that 12 volt power. On the bottom of the unit, if we rotate it around, you'll notice the actual power switch, which is going to be seldom used, and a reset button. Along the top, there's a little bit of venting and a little status light that lets you know where you are in the setup process, as well as the internet access or the status when it's actually already configured. Comparing the hardware between the smaller AC3900 and the larger AC6600, the biggest notable difference is the size. There are also a lot more events on the tri-band 6600 versus the smaller one. And the ports have been relocated, so now they are on the back of the unit where previously they were on the inside. As a refresher, it's a little deep well on the inside of the AC6600 where you can see there are two Ethernet ports, the power button, the actual power outlet, and the reset button. Of course, you can also see that little bit of cable management along the back where you could route the wires through. There isn't anything like that on the smaller AC3900. For our test, we tested both routing systems in two separate environments, a smaller 1,500 square foot townhome, which was very congested with Wi-Fi networks around a bunch of apartment buildings, and a larger 4,000 square foot multi-level home. Setup in either situation was pretty straightforward. It asks you whether you're using a modem and a router now, or just a combo modem router, and then it just walks you through the entire process. There are quite a bit of steps as you go through and it can take a little while to set everything up, especially as they go through updates and everything else, but it was fairly painless and pretty simple to actually get through. Once you actually create an account and it actually finds the node, it'll ask you to name the node based on something like the room that it's in. Once your initial node is set up, you can go ahead and move on and do all the other nodes. You do them one by one and it gives you a little bit of idea on placement depending on if you have a multi-level or a flatter house. Once it's set up, there is a lot of different stuff you can do within the app. Right away, you're brought to the dashboard, which will confirm whether or not you have internet access and how many devices are actually on your network. You can then actually share your network right away from here, it makes it extremely easy. You can enable or disable guest access, Turn on parental controls, which will allow you to take a device on your network and create a schedule of when it's allowed to have internet access, or if you want to block specific sites. A little bit shallow in terms of features there, but it's still nice to have. And you can also disable and change device prioritization right from that dashboard. Most of the things that are on the dashboard can easily be gotten through, through that left-hand menu, but it makes them all clean, simple, and easy to access right away on the dashboard. Another handy option is running a speed check. It's really nice to be able to do it right here within the app, and you can even do it remotely if you're not at home and you want to see how your internet's doing while you're not there. 
We'll come back to do that in a second and see how it actually performed. A few other things you can jump into the develop administration and check out all of your different nodes that you have, their updates, and if anything's pending, though they will automatically do those updates in the background without you having to worry about it. You can get in there, change your connection types, and a few other advanced settings that some people may want to tinker with. So now the most important part, which is performance. In either situations, we found signal strength not to be an issue at all, and performance actually was above what we were expecting. We tested with gigabit internet, so it's going to be faster than what the actual wireless is going to allow, so that would not be the limiting factor. So we actually got average speeds of around 200 Mbps on the down, which is really impressive considering this is rated for basic internet up to about 100 Mbps. Of course, when we tested the same exact setup in both locations with the larger AC6600, we were actually getting speeds about 360 to 400 Mbps, so definitely faster on the tri-band routers. Both routers performed exceptionally. There's still some things we like from other mesh routers. The apps from others are maybe a little bit better, and I like the USB-C option to connect for the Eros. Still, these are powerful units, so which one should you pick? Well. For most people, the newer AC3900 is going to be the way to go. Most people don't have enough 5 gigahertz items to really make the larger one worth it. This smaller one is going to be better for most internet plans and for most homes. It's a lot cheaper, so if money is no option, then definitely opt for the AC6600. It's going to be better for much larger homes, faster internet plans, and is really going to future-proof your network. If you want to pick up either models, whether solo, double, or three packs, you can find links for all of those down below in the description. And let us know what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, like it and hit that subscribe button. Also, check out our price guide, which makes it extremely easy to find the best deals on Apple products updated daily. Be sure to follow us on social media, and we'll see you in the next video.